can you see the screen yes okay let's start yeah so uh, we have discussed how to solve the linear inequalities how to uh, find the range of x how to plot it like how to represent it on real line so these uh, basic uh, the first thing like uh, which are related to just a solution of basic inequalities those uh, things we have already discussed it's just like the equation the way we solve the equation same way we have to solve inequalities but few uh, portions are there where we have to be un, uh, careful that is whenever we are multiplying or dividing by a negative number that's when we have where we have to reverse the inequality sign today i am going to take few word problem and we will be working on word problem so let's see what exactly directly i am taking the question because you are already having the basic knowledge we have discussed that how to solve the inequality so it's just like that first you uh, learned how to solve the equation 2x plus 3 is equals to 21 so from there you learned how to find the value of x and after that you learned how to frame the equation when we are having word problem the like statement based problem when we are having how to frame the equation and then how to solve the equation so the same thing we are going to do for inequalities so if we are having the question let me open the book There are four or five word problems are there. We will be discussing each in detail. Okay, so that you will be comfortable with the word problem also. So the first question I am going to take as a question number 21 from the exercise only. It says that Ravi obtained 70 marks and 75 marks in first two unit tests. So Ravi has obtained 70 and 75 marks. In first two units test. Now find the minimum marks he should get in third test so to have average of at least 60 marks. I need to write this statement then and only then you will be able to understand what exactly the question is trying to say. So find the minimum marks. he should get in third test to have an average of at least 60 marks. So you need to understand just a moment. So here we have to first frame the inequality. But before just starting with the inequality, let me explain you something. Suppose you are telling me that you want minimum five chocolates. 
okay we i am having a packet full of chocolate and you are telling me i want minimum 5 that means like the number of chocolate if you are asking minimum 5 that means it can be 5 it can be 6 it can be 7 it can be 8 it can be 9 it can be any number greater than 5 it can be bare minimum 5 or greater than 5 right if you are saying you need minimum 5 chocolate that means it has to be 5 or more than that yes or no yes and if i am going to give you four chocolate three chocolate you are not going to accept it because you have already given me the condition that you want minimum 5 so minimum 5 means what number of chocolate has to be greater than or equals to 5 yes or no yes now if i will be saying i need i want 10 laddus that means the number of laddus has has to be greater than or equals to 10 it can be bare minimum 10 or greater than th that that is the uh, meaning of this word minimum whenever we will be seeing minimum this much that means we have to use this inequality sign that this is greater than or equals to greater than or equals to because minimum 10 means i will be okay if you are giving me 10 right yes so let's use this concept over here in our question so the question says ravi has already got in first unit test 70 marks in second unit test 75 marks now find the minimum marks he should get in third so 70 marks he is already having 75 marks he is already having now x is the marks let's say he is getting in the third unit test he should get in the third test to have an average of at least 60 so if we will be finding average of this all three what is the formula for average like just sum of all the term divided by the number of term right yes so that the sum of this all has to be at least at least 60 minimum 60 so this average has to be greater than or equals to 60 are you getting it yes ma'am this is how we have framed the inequality now what we'll be doing just solving the inequality so let's solve it like uh, just th this three will go over there so we can say 60 into 3 it will be we don't have to change the inequality sign because we are just multiplying with a positive number so just like this we will be solving the equation and we solving the inequality not the equation and we will be getting the range of x so is it clearly now yes ma'am let's move to the next one okay i am i am going to leave this inequality for you because uh, i am i'm sure that you will be able to solve it right yes ma'am okay let's continue with the next question so the next question says to receive grade a in course one must obtain an average of 90 marks to get grade a average has to be 90 marks or more in five examination so average has to be either 90 or more okay If Sunita's marks in first four examination, her marks in first four examination is eighty seven, ninety two, ninety four, ninety five. These are her marks in first four examination. Find minimum marks that Sunita must obtain in the fifth. In the fifth, she must get something like minimum marks so that she will get A in the course. to get a average has to be minimum average has to be 90 okay it says that to get the grade a one must obtain an average of 90 marks or more let me write the statement so that it will make sense to you also to get grade a one must 
obtain an average of 90 marks or more it's just like the previous case that i you need uh, how many chocolates you have demanded five so minimum five chocolate or more than that right yes ma'am so it's just like the previous case that average of all the examinations marks has to be bare minimum 90 or more than that then and only then the person will be getting grade a okay so average means what one two three four five sum of all divided by number of terms okay this average has to be greater than or equals to 90 this all are whose marks a girl is there whose name is sunita so see this one is sunita's marks and average of her marks has to be greater than or equals to 90 then and only then she will be getting grade a is it clear yes ma'am now will you be able to solve this inequality yes ma'am okay Okay, let's move to the next question. So number next question says, find all pair of consecutive, let me write it. Find all pair of consecutive odd positive integers both of which are smaller than 10 such that their sum is more than 11 find all pair of consecutive odd positive term integer both of which are smaller than 10 okay consecutive odd positive integer means what odd positive number if you will look at the sequence of odd number those odd numbers are 1 3 5 7 9 so these are few odd numbers right yes so can you see the gap between this two is two 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 so can i say consecutive odd numbers are sitting at a gap of two yes ma'am. so if one of the odd number is x very next to it there will be x plus two that is that will be another odd number yes or no yes ma'am so let's write it let's say first odd number odd integer rather is x next consecutive odd integer will be x plus 2 now let's get back to question what exactly the question says find all pair of consecutive or positive integer okay both of which are smaller than 10 both of which are smaller than 10 can i write like this yes so the first one says x is smaller than 10 and the second one inequality when you will solve it it will say that x is smaller than 10 minus 2 that is 8 yes or no yes ma'am now the last condition says that such that their sum is more than 11 so sum of odd positive integer sum of x and x plus 2 is more than 11 sorry 11 11 this is the third condition Let's see what are we going to get the range of x from here. One of the range of x is this. Another is this. 
and let's see what are we going to get from here okay so twice x plus 2 is greater than 11 twice x is greater than 11 minus 2 twice x is greater than 9 and x is greater than 9 by 2 means what lena uh, 4.5 x is larger than 4.5. We are talking about integers. Integers means we will not take the decimal number. We'll take the integ integral value or we will take the numbers with positive or negative sign integers. Now, let's combine all the three cases. Okay. So, if we are having a real line, let me draw a real line over here. This is my real line. Okay. Here, the first one says x is less than 10. Second one says x is less than 8. Whenever we are having such cases, we will always take the common reason. Okay. So, this is... Just let me uh, write it with red only. Then we'll be marking with another color. 0, 1, 2. Let's say here 8 is there. And here 10 is there. Okay. Meanwhile, few gaps I have left. And here minus 1 is there. Minus 2 is there. Minus 3 is there. And here meanwhile we are having 5 also. Okay. Now let me mark all the given situation. So first one is x is less than 10. Less than than 10 means this is 10 and x will be this side yes or no yes or no lina yes ma'am now the next one says x is less than 8 so according to the next scenario x is lying over here less than 8 this one and after that last case says x is greater than 4.5 so 4.5, that means it is somewhere here. An axis, the color, orange color. 4.5 is somewhere here. An axis greater than that. Now, can you see the common reason? Just give me a second, just a second. Just look at the figure and tell me the common reason. Now, can you see the common reason? This is the common one. Here, orange is also there. Green is also there. Purple is also there. So, can I say that X value? Are you there? Yes, ma'am. So, can I say X value is greater than 4.5 and less than 8? Yes, right? ma'am. Without even plotting, you will be able to understand. X is greater than 4.5 and 1 is saying less than 8, less than 10. So, we have to take the minimum one. Okay? It's just like in a class, I am asking uh, for a like a party for any celebration, like uh, how much everybody can contribute. So, one says I, I can contribute rupees 10. Another says I can contribute rupees 100. Another one is saying I can contribute 20. So, I will go for the bare minimum, which everybody can give. Okay? So here we are having x, uh, x is greater than 4.5, x is less than 8 we are taking. One was less than 10, one was less than 8. So we have to take the minimum range which will fit for both of them. So this is the range we got for x. What we have to find here, we have to find, find all pair of consecutive positive integer. From this range we have to take all the pair of consecutive positive 
odd integer. So if I'll be listing down all the number in this range, all positive integers value in this range, it will be five, it will be six, it will be seven, right? Yes, That's so pair of consecutive integer will be five and seven only, which we are getting from here. Right, Lina? Yes, ma'am. So that's our answer. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Just a moment. Okay, uh, so yeah, we are uh, getting x in between this x value can be 5. In between this x, x value can be 5 and x value can be 7. But one thing we need to be careful over here in this question that we are talking about the consecutive odd pair. When x is 7, then consecutive to this one, another odd number will be 7. When x is 7, another consecutive number, which is an odd number, it will be 9. Yes or no? It's just like we are getting two values of, of x and for each value, we have to calculate y value also. Are you getting it? Yes, ma'am. So here, let's say y means what? The next consecutive x plus 2. So we have, this time we have got x value only. But still we have to calculate y value for each and every case. The way we solve the equation, the linear equation in two variables, same way. So here we will be having one of the pair as 5 and 7. And another pair also we will be getting y because another possible x value is 7. So next to it, it will be 7 plus 2. That is 9 will be the another odd number. And the pairs are 5, 7, 7, 9. Are you getting why we are taking these two pairs? Yes, sir. For each value of x, we are taking both, both the things. Let's move to the next one. Here the next question says that find all positive, all pair of consecutive So the next question is also like this only find all pair of consecutive even positive integer, both of which are larger than five. So even positive integer also, if you will look at the even integer, it's also sitting at the gap of two only like two, four, six, eight, ten. Can you see there is a gap of two, 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 two? Yes. Sir. So similarly, we will be taking for this case also. Okay. And here it says the sum is less than 23. Now the next question says the longest side of a triangle is three times the shortest side. Let me draw a triangle.
I'm going to say this one is the longest side. This one is the second longest. And this one is the shortest side. Okay. Now it says the longest side of a triangle is three times the shortest side. And third side is two centimeters shorter than the longest side. Okay. So longest side, longest side is three times the shortest one. So if shortest side is X, longest one will be three X, right? Now, and the third side, that means the remaining side is two centimeters shorter, two centimeters shorter than the longest one. So can you see all of the sides measurement? Yes, ma'am. Okay, longest is three times shortest. So I have taken shortest as a X, longest will be three X. Now the remaining side is two centimeter is smaller than the longest. So I have written two centimeter is smaller than the longest. We got all the three sides. Now, what does it say? It says that the perimeter of triangle is at least 61. Whenever this word you will see at least that means minimum that that's where you have to use this sign greater than or equals to. So here the question says that the perimeter of this triangle is at least that means greater than or equals to 61. Perimeter formula is sum of all the sides. So we will be taking 3x plus x plus 3x minus 2. That greater than or equals to 61 and from here again we'll be able to solve it for x is it okay yes ma'am let's move to the next one the last question after that uh, we'll be starting today only permutation and co combination the like basic concept introduction related to that so the next question says a man want to cut three length from a single piece of board a board is there, which is of 91 centimeter. It's just like uh, we need to use the concept when you are going to market with 500 rupees in hand, then you can spend money less than or equals to 500, right? If you are buying pen, if you are buying pencil, if you are buying book, you are having some snacks. So whatever you are spending, that has to be the all the amount has to be less than or equals to 500 rupees. Yes or no? Either you can spend 500 or you can spend less amount than that. Right, yes. Lina? Yes, this much capacity only you are having to spend 500 rupees. You cannot spend more than that because that much money you don't have in pocket already. You are having only and only 500 rupees in your pocket. So what you can do, you can go, you can buy some stuff and you can come back with remaining amount of money. So that time what you did, you have spent less than 500. Or the another case can happen where you have gone to the market and you spent the total 500. So that time you are spending amount which is equals to 500 so either you can spend less than 500 or you can spend equals to 500 yes or no yes ma'am and that's what the inequality sign we are having less than or equals to okay so similar concept we are going to apply in this question also so if a person is having 91 centimeter piece of like the total length of this board is 91 centimeter and if a person is going to cut three piece from here three pieces if he is going to cut from here then the sum of all the pieces will be less than or equals to 91 centimeter so if i am having if i am having this book like th suppose this is a board here i am cutting three pieces so the condition can be i am utilizing the whole board that time it, I'm utilizing total 91 centimeter. Or if I'm just cutting out 
uh, three pieces and something is few cut pieces are left remaining which i am just keeping it aside that time i am using less than 91 cm okay so let's get back to the question a man want to cut three length from this single piece of board of length 91 cm the second length is to be three centimeter longer than the shorter shortest let's write the condition second first third third means shortest according to the sequence it's there it's second shortest uh, the like the first one is the largest one then the second largest then the third one the minimum one the least one so the condition says a man want to cut three length the second length is to be three centimeter longer than the shortest and the third length is twice as long as shortest so both are dependent on shortest we'll be considering shortest as a x now again i am reading the second is three centimeter longer than shortest Second is three centimeter longer than the shortest. And third is third is to be twice as long. So third, this one is twice as long as the shortest. So there are three pieces. One is the shortest. Second shortest or the second one is three centimeter more than the shortest. And the first one is twice of the shortest. Is it clear so far? Yes, ma'am. And the total length of the board is 91 centimeter. Okay. So from here only we can write one condition. That all the length that is 2x plus x plus 3 plus x all the length will be smaller than or equals to 91. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Whether he can up, just cut and use all the the total board and can use 91 centimeter or 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 he is having the capacity to use less than 91 maybe some cut pieces will be there which he will be keeping aside okay so this this is the inequality which we are getting from the given question now let's read the question what are the possible length of the shortest board if the third piece if the third piece if the third piece is to be at least five centimeter longer than the second okay if the third piece is five uh just a moment let me check which one is called third which one is called second because naming we have to give properly otherwise we will end up doing mistake Can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. So here in the question, it's written as one is known as shortest. Let me write the name properly. One is known as shortest. Third is not there. One is known as second. And this one is known as for third. This twice x is known as third piece. Okay, this is how it is. It's just having the name in the question. Because here we need to use the name properly because it says that the third piece is to be at least five centimeter longer than the second. So we need to, whatever, which one is the third, which one is the second, we need to identify clearly. So that's how it is given in the question. Third is 2x, second is x plus 3, shortest is x. Okay, now here it says, yeah now the question says let's uh, write it according to the uh, given condition if the third piece is at least this much longer suppose uh, you are having 
200 rupees and I am having 50 rupees only. Okay, Lena is having 200 rupees and I am having only 50 rupees. So you are having more amount of money than me. If you are having already more and if I'll be writing it in inequality, like you are having 150 more than me. So I need to give 150 to my amount. Then and only then we both will be at same place. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. So if in the equation, in the question, if it says that something is larger, so please don't add on that side because that is already larger. You are larger than, like you are having more, like uh, you are having 150 rupees more than me, then definitely I'll not be adding 150 to your side because that time again, you are getting more and more uh, like gap with me. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. So if in the question, whenever it says in, in, in while solving any inequality, while sol solving any question that Ram's height is 10 centimeter more than Shyam's height, then you need to write Ram's height is already more. Shyam's height is 10 centimeter. Like with if we are comparing Ram with Shyam, Ram is having 10 centimeter more, then we need to give 10 to Shyam, then and only then both will be at same place, right? Yes, ma'am. So, similarly, in this question, in this condition, we need to understand that third piece, which one is the third one? 2x. Third piece is 2x and second piece is x plus 3. Third piece is to be at least 5 centimeter longer than the second. Third is already longer. Okay, if you will add something over there, if you will end up adding five centimeter over there, that means you are making it more larger. Okay, so please don't do that. Third is already larger than second by five centimeter. Now, at least minimum, it is five centimeter larger. That means greater than or equals to minimum wins if uh, if you want uh, let's get back to those condition that if you wanted yeah this one here you wa wanted five chocolate minimum five chocolate that means i can give you five i can give you six i can give you seven like bare minimum, you can accept five or more than that. That is the minimum, that is the meaning of minimum or at least, right? Yes, ma'am. So here also it says that third piece is at least, at least means greater than or equals to five centimeter longer than the second. That means second plus five. Okay. Is it clear, Lena? Yes, ma'am. This is equation number two. Now we just have to solve first and second and we just have to check what is the common region which will be acceptable for both the values of x. That is That will be our answer. So is it clear? First condition was the total length of the board was 91 centimeter. One is 2x, one is x plus 3, another is x. So I said when you, we will add all of them, that will be either smaller than 91 or equals to 91. Because in hand, we are 91 centimeter board only. So we can cut out smaller than 91 or we can use the total board that is 91. That is the first equation. Now the second condition says, if the third piece is to be at least 5 centimeter longer than the second. So third is 2x, second is x plus 3. At least means greater or equals to we have framed one more inequality from it. Now we will be solving each and every inequality one by one and then we will be getting the range of x. And from there if we are getting two ranges then we have to choose the common range which will be okay for both of them. Is it clear Lina? Yes ma'am. So this was the last question from linear inequality. Okay. Now we are going to start permutations and combinations. 
So let's start with the basic introduction of permutations and combinations. Just give me a second. Uh, let me uh, start with a new slide. Okay, so at first we'll be discussing here what is the uh, fundamental principle of counting and how we can use it uh, to find permutations. What exactly is permutations? So let's say let's say we are having the word here the first let's understand the meaning of the word permutations and combinations so combination is the same combination which we use in our uh, real life that i am having uh, i am having uh, let's say uh, what can be the i am having two shirts and i am having three trousers okay trouser 1 trouser 2 trouser 3 so here we are having few like if we have to choose combination then we can choose shirt one with trouser one or we can choose shirt one with trouser two or we can choose shirt one with trouser three so this way what are we doing we are choosing the possible combinations okay now permutation means what permutations means arrangement so basically this word means arrangement where we are doing like arrangement like out of five if we have to arrange two at a time suppose we are having uh, a b c d e five alphabets and we have to make a code of two like a code consist of consisting of two alphabet only so what are we doing we will be doing the arrangement over here we can take this two at a time or we can take this two at a time we can take this two at a time but this two also we will be taking but which which sequence it can be a b it can be b a or if you if we are taking b c then it can be b c it can be c b right if we are taking c d then it will be c d or d c so this way a lot of different arrangement will come out yes or no Yes, ma'am. That's what we are going to discuss while discussing the concept of permutation. So this is like possibilities and everything we'll be discussing in detail over here. Let's start with the very basic concept. 
So first we are going to discuss what is fundamental principle of counting. What exactly this rule says, what exactly this principle says. So this principle says, before jumping directly to the principle, this let's take one example. So the example is, suppose we are having three pants, pant one, pant two, pant three. Okay. And we are having two shirts, shirt one and shirt two. Now, how many possibility, how many different pair of clothes we can make from here? So if you know, like we have already done the concept of sets and all, there we were finding the Cartesian product and everything. Like that only we are going to take over here. That pant one with the first shirt or we can take pant one with the second shirt. Yes or no? Yes. So this is one of the possibility that pant one with shirt one and another is pant one with shirt two. Now the next possibility is pant two with shirt one and pant two with shirt two. So the next possibility I'm going to write pant two with shirt one and pant two with shirt two. Now the next possibility again, pant three with shirt one, pant three with shirt two. So pant three with shirt one and pant three with shirt two. So let's see how many possibility we got. One, two, three, four. Oh, five, six. Total six possible cases or total six possibilities we got, right? Yes. So this, according to the fundamental principle of counting, rather than every time going and making the possible cases just like this one with the help of tree diagram or anything, whatever works for you, we can directly take like three pants are there. So three from here and two shirts are there. So two from here. This, when we will do the multiplication, we will be getting the number of all possible outcome or the number of all the possibility which can, which we can get from here. Okay. So why we are just, just by doing the multiplication we are getting, it's like one, one of the pant is having two possibility. Another pant is having two possibility. Another pant is having two possibility. So this way three times two we are doing. That's what the fundamental principle of counting says. If M ways are there to arrange the first thing, like just uh, let me write the principle over here so that it will make sense to you. So if an event can occur in M way and following with another event, S1, S2, it is occurring in N ways, okay? So the total number of, ev the total number of occurrence of the event will be m times n. This will give the total possibility or the total number of occurrence of the event. Is it clear, Lina? Yes, ma'am. Now, here only, if we are having, suppose here tie is also there. So, I am saying there are, uh, there are three ties now. Tie one. The same cases P1, P2, P3. Here we are having two trousers, one and two. Now we are having two ties. Uh, S1, S2 we have written. Short we have taken. So let's say we are taking the same over here. That is S1, S2. Now let's say I'm saying that two or three ties are also there. Let's say two ties are also there. So how we'll be finding the total possibility now? Now the first pant with first sort, with first tie, then first pant with first sort, then second tie. This, when we, this way we can just take out a lot of different possibility and that will be time taking. But the fundamental principle of counting says just, just see how many Possibility can occur from here. Three, here two, and again two. So we will be just multiplying all of them and that will be giving us the occurrence of all possible cases or whatever will be the possibility, whatever possibility we will be getting after doing the arrangement. 
everything will be getting just by doing the multiplication of all of them according to fundamental principle of counting. So 3, 2 times 6, 2 times 12. Total 12 ways will be there in which we can arrange and mix and match our this uh, combination, whatever we are having the clothes in hand. 12 different pairs, 12 different com the pieces we can make. Are you getting it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, rather than finding it this way, every time just by making the tree, we can just take how many numbers are there in the first one, how many numbers are there in the second one. We can do the multiplication and that will give the total number of occurrence of like uh, what will be the total possibility. So... Let's move to a few questions. Now, first thing first, we will be discussing about permutations. How to find the permutation by using the above principle. That is the fundamental principle of counting, how we are going to use it while finding the permutation. So let's take few questions over here and let's understand it, the application of this uh, rule with the help of question. So the first question says, find the number of four letter words with or without meaning which can be formed out of the letters of the word rows where repetition is not allowed where repetition of letters not allowed so how we'll be solving this type of question so let's read the question carefully it says that Find the number of four letter word. How many letter word we have to find? One, two, three, four. Four letter word. We have to fill this four boxes. Okay. With or without meaning. It's not necessary that we have to make a meaningful word only. We can make like any word. Any way we can arrange it. If it is not making any sense, that is also fine. Now, by using this letters like r we are having o we are having s we are having e we are having we can arrange this r o s e anyway in this four boxes okay where repetition is not allowed that means two times we can't write r two times we can't write o whatever we are writing that that we have to exclude it so how we'll be finding the number of four letter words so again here we are going to use the fundamental principle of counting okay so first for the first box how many possible cases will be there for the first box yes lena uh four yeah for the second box how many possible cases will be there three yeah for third box, how many possible cases will be there? Two. Yeah, perfect. And for the last one, only one. one. Right? And yeah. fundamental principle of counting says just multiply all of them together so that you will get the total number of occurrence of event. So multiply it. And this is what like 4 into 3, 12, 2 times 24 into 1. 24 ways are there to arrange this word. Okay, without repetition. If repetition is allowed, then if we are having four boxes, 
and if we are having this four r o s e this four letters this four alphabets we are having then for the first one four four possibilities there for the second one again four is there right yes ma'am for the third one again four is there for the fourth one again four is there why because whatever we have used we can use it again repetition is allowed so for this one 4 into 4 into 4 into 4 and that will give us the total number of ways okay now let's say we are having a question which says that Given four flag of different color, how many different four flags we are having of different color? And the question is asking how many different signal can be generated if the signal requires the use of two flags? Okay, this way signal is there. Two flag, like the, the here we I can put one one flag here. I can put the second flag. Just like this, we can make the signal. So can you please tell me what will be the total like possibility for the first one? If we are having four flag, then here we can put any one of them. So four possible cases can like four possible possibility we are having to fill this box yes or no yes and for the next one here also different different we have to make, use repetition we cannot do so three possibilities there yes or no for the next one yes ma'am. and what what we got from here four into three that means 12 total possibilities yes or no yes ma'am. just a second Okay, uh, so you, you got it how to use the fundamental principle of counting to find the uh, permutations, right? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Do you know how to use the factorial notation? If I'll be asking you what is the value for factorial 3, can you please tell me what, what's the value of factorial 3? Okay, uh, let's discuss it. So, we need to discuss it, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, if I am saying factorial notation, let's discuss about it and then we'll be solving few questions related to it. Factorial. Factorial, we represent it either with this sign or with this sign, okay? So either this one or this one, I can write it as factorial 2 like this or I can write it as factorial 2 like this. And what's the meaning of this one? 2 into 1. The meaning of this one is also the same 2 into 1. So how we are finding the factorial? If we are having factorial 3, we have to take 2. Uh, we have to take the number which you can see over here, that number, then the previous number, then the previous number. Till 1, we have to come. If you are having, let's say, factorial 7, then 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So whatever you can see, whatever number is visible for finding the factorial, from that number, you have to come 1 back, 1 back, again 1 back, again 1 back, till what? till 1 and all the numbers you have to do the multiplication to get the factorial value 
So for the first one, the value of factorial 2 is 2 only. For the second one, the value of factorial 3 is 6. For the third one, the value of factorial 7 will be, it will be a huge number, 7 into 6 into 5 into 4. We have to do the multiplication to get that value. What will be the value for factorial 4? Or if I am writing factorial 4 like this, the value will be 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. That means 4, 3 times 12, 2 times 24 into 1 is 24. Are you getting it, Lena? Yes, ma'am. This is how we do the calculation of factorial. So if I am saying what is the value of factorial, let like 5, it will be. Either we can write it like this or if someone is like writing like this, please don't get confused. Both are same thing. Okay. So factorial 5 will be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. 5, 4 times 20, 3, 2 times 6 into 1. So it's 120 is the result. Similarly, if I say what is factorial n, it will be n, n minus 1. Again, one step back, n minus 2. Again, one step back, n minus 3. Till what? 1. Getting it? Yes, ma'am. Let's do a few problems related to this factorial. So, suppose we have to find the value of factorial 7. Just like this one. The way we have written, now we have to do the calculation also. And it's okay, we have to do the calculation. We will be doing it. 6, 7 times 42. 5, 4 times 20 into 6. So we will be having 42. 2 times, let's multiply. 2, 2 times 4. 4, 2 times 8. 840 into 6. 6, 4 times 24, 4. Carry 2. 5040. This is what we got as a factorial 7. Can you see it? We have yes, we just have to write the thing and we have to multiply them together. That's it. It's okay? Like, is it okay? Yes, ma'am. If we have to find 7 factorial minus 5 factorial, let's do the calculation. 7 factorial means 7 into 6 into 5, into 4, into 3, into 2, into 1. And 5 factorial means 5 into 4, into 3, into 2, into 1. Now, either we can just do the calculation of this one, do the calculation of this one, and then do the subtraction. That is one of the way. Or another way is, here we can take out common. So, see, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1, let's leave it. 1 means nothing. So, 5, 4, 3, 2 is common. So, can I take it out as a common? 5, 4, 3, 2. Yes, ma'am. And can write the remaining. That is 6, 7 times 42 minus 1. Is it clear, Lena? Yes, ma'am. This is just another way. 5, 4 times 20, 23 times 60. Yeah, 20 and this 6, 120. And 42 minus 1 is 41. Now we have to do the multiplication of this. Two. So now you, now only you just focus it over here that we can, 7 factorial can be written as 7 into 6 into 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Can I write it as 5 factorial? Yes, ma'am. We can write it, right? 7 factorial ko aise bhi likh sakte hai. 7 into 6. 6 ke baad kya likhte hai? Ham log 5 likhte hai. Phir 4 likhte hai. Phir 3 likhte hai. Phir 2 likhte hai. Phir 1 likhte hai. Usi ko to 5 factorial bolte hai. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. So, this concept we can use over here. If we are having 7 factorial minus 5 factorial, we can say 7 can be broken into 7 into 6 into 5 factorial minus 5 factorial. Here is 5 factorial common, 6, 7 times 42 minus 1. The same calculation will be getting over here. Okay? Now, let's do a few more questions. If we are having 7 factorial, by 5 factorial, now this concept you can use it over here. 7 factorial ko likh sakte hai. 7 into 6 into 5 factorial. Or 5 factorial ko abhi aise hi rane Can you see both can be cancelled? Yes, ma'am. 
and what we got six seven times forty two. So without doing that much of calculation, we ended up getting the result, right? Yes. Let's do few more question. So if we are having n factorial by r factorial n minus r factorial when n is equals to 5 r is equals to 2 let's put the value first n ka value 5 hai, r ka 2 so 5 factorial divided by r value that is 2 factorial n minus r that means 5 minus 2 factorial so we are having 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial 5 minus 2 is 3 factorial. This is what we are having in hand right now. Okay. Now 5 ko aise break karenge ki ya to 3 factorial pe ja ke rukenge ya fir 2 pe. Ki koi ek to kat jai. Okay. So 5 factorial which is in the numerator we are going to write it as 5 into 4 into can I write it as 3 factorial now? Yes ma'am. Why we are writing so? Because 1, 3 factorial I can see in the denominator. So why not to cancel it as it is? 2 factorial, just keep it as it is. And 2, 3 factorial, 3 and 3 gone. Okay. 5 into 4 we are having in numerator and in denominator 2 factorial. What's the meaning of 2 factorial? We have to get back to 1. Okay. So 2 factorial means 2 into 1. Let's do the calculation. So we got 10. Is it okay, Lina? Yes, ma'am. So this is how just the new notation and this is the uses of this notation. This is how we will be using it. Now, if we have to, if we have 1 by 8 factorial plus 1 by 9 factorial is equals to x by 10 factorial, then we have to find the value of x. How will we be finding the value of x? Let's solve this equation. Parallelly, we don't have to prove it. We have to find the value of x. So here LCM will be. Eight factorial. So let's write it as it is. Nine factorial. Can we write it as nine into eight factorial? Yes, ma'am. Is equals to x by. Let's write ten factorial as a ten factorial only. Four now. Okay. Now. Let's continue. LCM of this two will be, can I say what LCM will be 9 into 8 factorial? Whatever is common, first write it. And then the remaining one we have to write. Okay. So is it okay? 9 into 8 factorial is the LCM? Yes, ma'am. So, this is the LCM. Now, 8 factorial is there. So, 9 will be there in the numerator. Plus, 1 will be there because everything is same, same. X by 10 factorial. 9 plus 1 means 10 by 9 into 8 factorial is equals to X by 10 factorial. Can I write 10 factorial as a 10 into 9 into 8 factorial? Can I write, Lina? Yes, ma'am. ऐसे तोड़ना सीखेंगे, ठीक है? Break करना, ताकि हम लोग यहीं से यहीं cancel out करना सीख लें। So are you getting why I am cancelling both sides denominator? Yes. So we ended up getting 10 is equals to x by 10 only. That means x is equals to 100. Can I say? Yes. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. So once you learned what is the meaning of the factorial, always try to break it. Whenever we are having, we can write it as a 10 into 9 into 8 factorial. We can also write it as a 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 factorial. Okay, so if you will learn how to break it, then you are sorted. You will be able to solve any problem from here. Let me take one more problem. Just like this one, okay? You are going to tell me what are we supposed to do over here. One, 1 by 6 factorial plus 1 by 7 factorial 
is equal to x by 8 factorial. Tell me how to find the value of x over here. Yes, Lena. Yes, Lena, how to do it? What will be the LCM? Here we are having 6 factorial. Here we are having 7 factorial. 6 factorial matlab 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. 7 factorial means 7 into 6 into. Just like that. The normal expansion. But we also know we can break 7 factorial, the bigger one, in terms of the smaller one. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. So can I write 7 factorial as 1 by 7 into 6 factorial? Why do I write this? Because 7 factorial ka matlab hota hai 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. And 6 factorial ka matlab hota hai 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So, 7 factorial ko mein kya likhna chaati 7 to hai. Uske baad jo bhi expansion hai 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Is sare ko 6 factorial likh sakte hai na? Yaha se. Hmm? Can we write? Yes. Ma are you getting it? Why are we writing? Yes ma'am. So, 7 factorial ko 7 ko side hatao aur uske baad jo bhi bache wo sare to 6 factorial mein bhi aate. To aise likh lete hai 7 into 6 factorial. Kyu aise kar rahe hai? Kyunki first wale ka denominator hai 6 factorial. So, agar yaha bhi kuch 6 factorial type ka dikhe ga to LCM lene mein like it will be easy to take out the LCM. Okay, that's why we are breaking it like this. Now, if we will be having, let's say we will be having 1 by 5 factorial plus 1 by 7 factorial. So, I'll be thinking 5 ko 7 nahi bana sakte. Lekin 7 ko 5 bana sakte. Kaise? So, 7 factorial mein 7 or 6 ko multiply karte. Uske baad jo bhi aega, us, that expansion and 5 factorial expansion is same. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. So, 7 factorial ko aise mein break kar sakte hai. Ab yaan se LCM kya niklega? 5, 5 common hai. That is, that will be there in the LCM. And 7 into 6 will also be there in the LCM. You understand, like, do you know how to take out the LCM when we are having such scenario? Yes, ma'am. So, LCM, we always take it out whenever we are having 9 and whenever we are having, uh, let's say, 21. So, 9 is 3 into 3. 21 is 7 into 3. So, how we take the LCM? First, we take the common one, 3, and then we take the remaining also, that is 3 into 7. This is the LCM. First, we take out the common and then we write the remaining numbers also and we'll do the multiplication. That's how we find the LCM. The very basic concept of LCM says to find it like this. Whatever is common, we can't take it two times. So here is three, here is three. We, if that is common in both the factors, then we have to take it only once. Okay, that's how we take out the LCM. So here also we are using the same concept to find the LCM. Now, if we are having 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 5 factorial, can I say 1 by 2 ko to 5 ne bana sakte, lekin 5 ko torke 2 tak aake rook sakte. So we can say 
फाइव इंटू फोर इंटू थ्री इंटू नाउ टू फैक्टोरियल आर यू गेटिंग इट यस मैम सो दिस इज हाउ वी कैन ब्रेक इट द लार्जर नंबर इन टर्म्स ऑफ द स्मॉलर नंबर फैक्टोरियल वॉट एवर यू नीड जस्ट स्टॉप इट ओवर दर ओके सो कैन यू से इफ वी आर हैविंग वन बाय लेट से एट फैक्टोरियल Plus one by ten factorial. Can you please tell me what to write it over here? How to break it? Are we going to break eight or are we going to break ten? Which one we are going to break? Uh, ten. Ten. How? How? Ten into nine into eight factorial. Perfect. So this is how we are going to break. Now, what will be the LCM, Lena, of this two? Uh, eight factorial into nine into ten. Perfect. So the first numerator will be eight factorial is already there ninety, and the second numerator will be everything is there so one. So can I write our numerator become ninety one by ten into nine into eight factorial? Yes. Let's do our question. This was the question. this was the question okay so here we realized that we can write 1 by 6 factorial as it is and 7 can be written as 1 by 7 into 6 factorial is equals to x by 8 factorial let's write it as it is so we are having 7 into 6 factorial as a lcm here we are having 7 and here we are having only 1 is equals to x by 8 factorial So here we got eight by seven into six factorial, and here we are having x by eight factorial. Factorial I want to remove. So the other side eight six को तो eight नहीं बना सकते, लेकिन eight को six बना सकते. So let's make it eight into what Lena? Ah, uh, seven into six factorial. Into, yes, ma'am. Yeah, eight by सेवन इंटू सिक्स फैक्टोरियल अब दो दोनों साइड का डेनोमिनेटर एक दूसरे को कैंसल आउट कर देगा वाई वाई बिकॉज इफ वी विल बी सेंडिंग दिस डेनोमिनेटर द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड वन ऑन द अदर साइड एट विल बी देयर एंड एक्स बाई एट इंटू सेवन इंटू सिक्स फैक्टोरियल इंटू सेवन इंटू सिक्स फैक्टोरियल दिस विल टूगेदर विल कम एंड विल सिट विथ मल्टीप्लीकेशन ओवर हियर दैट्स वाई आई एम सेंग दिस वन एंड दिस वन विल गेट कैंसल्ड आउट And the value of x is this eight x by eight is eight and x will be sixty four. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Please try to solve the factorial notation, the questions based on factorial notation. Here we are having one exercise fully based on factorial notation. So if you know, uh, like you have learned the. learn the concept of permutation like first how many possibility will be there for first one how many possibility will be there for second one what is the possibility for third one do try those question related to permutation where we are using fundamental principle of counting and do try this question we are we are having a lot of different factorial notations questions over here 